For this one, you will need to install the amazing Blender GIS free add-on, link in the description. Once you have installed it, you will have a little GIS menu here. Using this, you can directly get Google Maps into Blender. Let's navigate somewhere. You can move around or you can hit G and type some name of a place. Okay, let's take this area. Press E when you're happy. You now have a flat cutout of your area. Now we have to get elevation data. There are different data sets. I find that Open Topography STRM is better for land elevation data. Choose which one suits you. Uh, you may need an API key, but just register on the website, it's free. And elevation data is imported and it is applied as a texture displace modifier to the plane. What I will do is add a few more subdivisions. I just create a new subdivision modifier and move it before the displace modifier. This allows you to bring out a little more geometric detail. By default, the elevation has a realistic scale. That's fine if you want to go for realism, but in some cases you might want a bit more intense vertical scale. For that, I suggest that you use the Z scale value here in the object menu. In the materials tab, bring the roughness up to 1, add a sun lamp or load an HDRI for lighting and you're done. Now if you have a bit more time, I'm going to show you a few tips that I personally use to make it look nicer. So first, uh, this looks nice from far away. From up close, not so much. Let's fake in a little more detail. For this, I use a very common trick in 3D graphics. I create a noise texture, tweak the scale a bit, and feed the output to a bump node. And then I use this bump node output to set the normals of our material. Instead of using a sun lamp, you can feed a Nishida sky texture to the background color. Using this, you can quickly change the rotation of the sun and even the time of day of your scene and it's pretty cool. Add a solidify modifier to add some thickness to your terrain. If you have used the database for marine elevation, um, well you can have it like this, but what you can do also is add a cube, rescale it, change the material and make it look like seawater. This is not bad, the final touch will be just like last time, except this time I add a little bit of distortion to make it look like waves. And voila, if you set it to 4D you can even animate it, kinda.